To lift or not to lift? That's today's question. Another good one. Ooh, that's flying way out there. <laughs> What's in my hand? Yeah, still a, still a seven iron. Carry of 172, total distance of 182. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Real quick before we get into today's video, I made a shirt, it's got my logo on it. On the back, what am I always saying? Progress, not perfection. You know, I might have to start a merch site soon, in case you guys are interested in any of these. Let me know down in the comments below, but anyway, don't forget to look in the description below for some links that can save you some money and some ways to support the channel. Amazon, Bionic Gloves, Shop Indoor Golf. Also, there's a super thanks button down below. It's kind of a tip jar. If you appreciate this tip, feel free to throw a little tip in the jar. On to today's video. Now, I've done some searches on YouTube. I've looked and tried to find some videos that address this exact thing. It's kind of hard to find, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to make this video, but I have been able to find some videos that, that mentioned this, talked about it, kind of went around it a little bit. I got some conflicting views. Some people say, don't lift in the golf swing, and then other channels say, absolutely lift in the golf swing. So you'll have to let me know down in the comments below which side of the fence you fall into. And I'm gonna just go ahead and preface this by saying a lot of the one-off tips that you see out on YouTube for golf, they, they have to be part of an entire system, an entire method for swinging. I've said this before in previous videos, I've been saying it for years now, that a lot of these tips, these one-off tips that just address one little thing, they can't just be plug and play. They have to be part of an entire and complete perspective and philosophy on the golf swing, so buyer beware. Now the tip that we're gonna be reviewing in today's video is going to be a, a very simple method of swinging the golf club. It's basically two components, a turn involving your body turning back and then turning through, and an up and down motion of the golf club. So component one, would be to lift the arms and bring the arms back down. Component two would be to add the rotation and create a type of blend between the lifting and the turning back and through that creates a golf swing. So essentially, it would look something like this. You're going to lift, you're also going to turn, then you're going to drop the hands and arms and you're going to turn through. So it would be a blend of that motion. Hope that makes sense. It seems pretty simple to me. Now in trying this out, I found that it can be made even simpler than that because as I lift the turn, well, it just kind of happens. Yeah, that's another well-struck shot. The turn just kind of happens automatically because somewhere down in your subconscious, I guess, maybe, and this is just a theory, your body knows that it has to turn and where you're trying to lift the club to and then down to just kind of make sense to it. I don't know, but it seems fairly automatic to me. That's another 180 yard seven iron with very little effort. But I know, I know you guys want to know a little bit more. And what is the sequence? When do you lift? When do you turn? How do you blend it? Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I get it. I get it because I've asked myself these exact same questions. So when I stand up here and I say, okay, let's lift the club and then let's turn and then let's drop the club and then turn through again, you're kind of going, well, that doesn't really look much like a golf swing. It looks more like a drill. So how do you take it from being a drill to being a golf swing? And I would say this, in recent weeks, what I've been finding is that if with, with me coming under the plane so much and then lifting, I've tried to reverse that sequence and lift first and then actually bring the club back down, back here. Because coming into the golf ball is really the most important part. How you come from waist high back here into impact, that area is supremely important. So I'm trying to lift first and I get my turn back. And then from there, I'm trying to bring the hands down just before I want to try and turn through to get the hands to come back down into the slot. 
I know you've heard that term before. So as with any learned behavior, any kind of skill you're going to try and learn, you got to start off small. You got to start off in pieces. You got to start off slow. And to take it slow, I, I started lifting the arms, then turning, then dropping the hands and arms, and then turning through. Over time, doing that and then speeding it up a little bit more and a little bit more as I got comfortable with it, it became more of that blend. It became a quicker movement and it started to add speed and power at the golf ball. So I worked my way up to it. But in recent weeks, I've mentioned Monty Shinebloom and I've mentioned a tip from Eric Cagorno. And this kind of works with both of those because Monty talks about something called broom force in his videos, where he says to bring the club down first, get it to about waist high, and then turn through. That ensures that you're going to come from the inside with that shallow angle of attack to sweep the golf ball off of the turf. And with Eric Cagorno, he talked about taking it around his shoulders first and dropping down on another plane and bringing it through lower, which again also ensures that you're going to come from the inside with a nice shallow attack and you're going to sweep the golf ball off toward the target. So both of those tips kind of roll in and the natural progression is to get to this. If you remember back at the beginning of the video, I was saying that the whole purpose of this exercise was to try and break the golf swing down into really simple components that we can understand. Lifting the club up and down, you can understand that. Turning back and turning through, you can understand that. Anything that gets complicated and talks about angles of this and how this needs to set here and what sort of things need to articulate in order to make that motion. All of that can be handled by the subconscious, I think, if we just simplify it in our mind and give ourselves simple tasks. So from here, my thought is to get my hands high. And from here, my thought is to get the hands back down low. Now, I want to feel as if I'm facing the golf ball the whole time and I don't really lose my posture. So I just want to get the hands high and then get the hands low. That ensures that I'm going to come in from the inside with that nice shallow angle of attack. And I'm not going to be bringing the shoulder out trying to attack it this way. If I'm high here, I want to get low here first. That's the first priority. And like I said, the turn should just happen. So we'll hit another one here and I'm just going to think about high and low. Now that shot flew about 172 yards in the air and rolled out to about 177 with a seven iron. Again, a really solidly struck shot that flew high and had the tiniest little bit of draw on it. It's super repeatable and super consistent. And it's a really easy thing to remember, up and down, that's it. So we're gonna do one more here, just to show that it's not a fluke. And again, I want the hands to come down back here, not out here. So lifting and then dropping. Another high, solidly struck shot. Guys, I'm not a coach. I take tips that other people are putting out there and I try them out. I put them to the test out here. That's why I'm the golf test dummy. I don't understand a lot of the biomechanics and the kinesiology and all of the complicated instruction that is out there nowadays. And I'm trying to simplify things for you so that you can understand them. And I think that we can all understand that coming up and coming back down combined with a little bit of turn and some blending over time with some practice can get you some really great results. Leave me some comments down below. Don't forget that the comments that you leave are not just for me, they're for all of the viewers who watch this video to also read and get reference from. It's kind of a review of a review, which is fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you next time.